Hi guys, welcome to today's physics exercise. This time I'm trying to talk down to the nitty gritty of the problem to save you guys time and give you guys a good experience. So let's now go to the first problem. That problem is the number 35 on the page 67. And it is a three star problem. That means it is relatively difficult. But I'd like you to, I'd like to have you under, really understand the problem after my teaching. So um, let's now go look at this question. question. A rescue plane wants to drop supplies to an isolated mountain climbers on a rocky ridge 235 meters below. So here is our plane and here is the mountain climbers and it wants to drop a supply. So basically we are going to look at the object dropped by the plane but not the plane itself. So um the distance traveled by the object on the vertical axis should be 235 meter. Yeah, that is 235 meter. And if a plane is traveling horizontal, horizontally with a speed of 250 km per hour, that is equivalent to 59.4 meters per second. So the drop object and the plane should be moving at the same speed because they have inertia. Yeah, so that the object is moving horizontally at 69.4 meters per second. So the first question asks how far in advance of a recipient must the goods be dropped? Yes, yeah, so how far must this object be dropped before the plane flies over the mountain climber here? It asks about the delta x. Okay. Now let's look at what amount we have. The first is that we know the vertical velocity of, of the object. No, no, no. Horizontal velocity of the object is 59.4 meters per second. And we know the distance traveled by the object vertically is 235 meters. And we know that the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second square. By writing this, we define that the downward vertical direction should be positive. Yeah, keep this in mind because we will return it to it later. Oh yeah, and what we want to know is what we want to know is the delta x, that is the horizontal distance traveled by the object. Let's write out the kinematic equation. The first is delta h equal to half times g times t squared. Remember that the object is accelerating on the vertical axis, on the vertical direction. So we use this equation, half times g times t squared. And now let's look at the horizontal displace displacement. It should be Vf times t because the object is moving at a constant speed on the x direction. So if we want to solve for delta x, we should know t. We should know t, but where can we get t? We can rewrite this equation to find t. So we rewrite this. We put this to the left hand. So um, t is equal to 2 times delta h divided by g and square root. So we put it here and we can get delta f is equal to vf times square root 2 times delta h divided by g. And we know vf, we know delta h and we know g. We put this number in and use our calculator and we can get that is um, 480.51 meters. Okay, so this is the answer of question one. Now let's go to question two. Suppose instead 
that the plane releases the supply a horizontal distance of 425 meters in advance of the mountain climbers. So we still have the climbers and we still have the planes, but now we know the horizontal displacement in advance. This horizontal di displacement, we name it delta x prime to differentiate it with the delta x in the question 1. So now that delta x prime should be 425 meter. And now it, the question asks us what vertical velocity up or down should the supply be given so that they arrive precisely at the mountain climber's position. So according to the question, the delta h has not changed. It's still 235 meter as the question one. And the initial velocity on the x direction has not changed. It's still 59.4 meter per, se per se Oh, no, no, no. I think I make a mistake. We don't know the velocity in this case because you see the delta x has changed and the object still has to travel precisely to the mountain climbers. So now it shouldn't be exactly horizontal. It may be somewhat upward or it may be somewhat downward. Anyway, it cannot be deep exactly horizontally. So if the question asks us what vertical velocity up or down should the object travel to fall precisely here. Let's now again have a look at what amounts do we know. We know that delta h is 235 meter and we know that no 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 we don't know uh, yeah, we know delta x is 425 meter, and we know g is 9.8 meter per second. Yes, in this case, we still suppose that the downward direction is positive, and oh, here is the delta x prime. Down, the downward direction is positive. And now, what what we want to know is the uh, initial velocity that is if direction yeah if direction upward or downward and the question asks us about the vertical velocity yes the vertical velocity that is v y zero the so magnitude the so magni the vertical magnitude of this v y or v zero that is v y zero So we can still write out the kinematic equations. The first one is delta h is equal to v y zero times t prime. We use t prime to differentiate the time from the time we use in the question one. Okay, so delta h is equal to v y zero times t prime plus half g times t prime squared. So basically, the object has a initial vertical velocity, and it is accelerated by the gravitational acceleration. So we can write this equation. Yeah, that is correct. And delta x prime, we know that it is equal to v x zero times t prime. Okay, so we have this two. And now, how can we decide the, the direction? How can we decide that if v y zero is a positive or a negative number? So we can try from this equation. We know that. Oh yeah, let me have a look. We know that. Um. Yeah, in this case, we know that uh, Vx0 should not be changed 
because in these two scenarios, the plane is moving at a constant speed, horizontally, so the objects must also be moving at this constant horizontal speed. So Vf0 has not changed. But here, Vx prime is greater is it is bigger than the delta x. Delta x prime is bigger than delta x. Let me write this. It's oh no, I think I make a mistake again. <laughs> Delta F prime is smaller. Yeah, it's actually smaller than delta x because if delta F prime is 425 meter and delta x, which we solved in the first question is 480.61 meter. So this is the same. So we can know that t prime is smaller than t. So how can we use this? Now let's go to look at the first equation. The two delta h, yeah, the delta h in the two scenarios have keep have kept unchanged. But in the first question, we do not have this term. We only have this term with t prime replaced by t. So we know that t prime is smaller than t. So we know that half g times t prime square must be smaller than half g times t square. Yeah, so we can write it. This is smaller than. We know that this is smaller, but the delta h, the sum, have kept unchanged. So this must be a positive number. It must be greater than zero to make the sum still the same. So we can know that v y zero times t is greater than zero. Or uh, t prime is greater than zero. And t prime must be a positive positive number, so we know that v y zero must be greater than zero. And remember that we call this downward direction to be positive, and v y zero is positive. So the vertical vertical velocity must be downward. Yes, that is downward. And now we know that the vertical velocity is downward. We have to solve for it using these two equations. We can solve for v y zero. It is equal to delta h minus half g t prime squared divided by t prime. Yeah, you can solve it by rearranging the terms in the first equation. You see that. Delta H. So um, if you pull this, you put this to the right hand side, and then you divide it, this two term by t prime, you can get this. And then you split this two, you can make this. And now it's time to replace the t prime. You can replace t prime with delta x prime divided by v x zero. Yes, you can replace it. You can replace it because the object is moving at a constant speed on the horizontal direction. And replace it, you, you will get You can get this. I'm putting in the number you know you can solve for VY0 and it is 8.37 meters per second. Yes, so now we have solved the second question. Now let's go to the third question. With what speed do the supplies land in the latter case? So it so the object falls from here to here. Basically it acts as about the final velocity of the object. So how can we solve it? We can use the Pythagorean theorem to combine the 
后一张图，后一张图 velocity and vertical velocity to get the resultant vector. Yes, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So here is C, here A, here B. We know that A, A square plus B square is equal to C square. We can use this to find V. Okay, let, let's now do it. V is equal to Vx square plus Vy square. And that is equal to Vx zero square. Yeah, because it's moving constant, moving at a constant speed on the horizontal direction. And how do we solve for Vy? Remember that the object is dragged by the gravity. So it's accelerating at the gravitational acceleration vertically. So we can use this equation. V squared equal to V zero squared plus two AX. So in this case, VY is equivalent to V and we can replace VY with this the right hand part. Okay. So that is VY zero squared plus Two times g times delta h, because we are analyzing the moving on the vertical direction, and we put in the numbers, we can get ninety seven point thirty three meter per second. Yeah, that is the answer we want. That is the magnitude of the final velocity vector of the object. Problem. I want to talk about. I want to talk about the projectile motion. So now let's go to the second problem. And with this problem, I want to tell you a magical formula to find the horizontal range. Yes, the horizontal horizontal range. So if you throw this object and it flies into the air and then it drops. At the same horizontal height, same horizontal place, yeah. And this horizontal displacement is the range. I will give you the formula to look for R if you know this initial angle. So you can solve for this initial van initial angle if you know. Oh, vice versa. So that equation is simple. It is R equal to if if equal if R equal to V zero square times sine two theta, where theta is the angle of initial velocity and the horizontal direction. Divided by g, and I will tell you how this is derived. So um, basically, you can start with writing this. R is equal to v x times t. Yes, that is right. And what what is v x? V x is equal to v zero times um, let, let me have a look. That equal to v v zero times cosine theta. Why is that? Because you can break up this v zero into two perpendicular vector, v x zero and v y zero, and you can multiply this by cosine theta to get this horizontal one, and multiply v zero by sine theta to get the vertical one. Yes, that is relatively easy. And what is t in this case? So basically, the object has moved to the highest direction, a highest point, and then it falls to the sa same level. So, looking at the motion on the y direction, we can see that the object decelerates from vy0 to 0, and then it accelerates from 0 to Vy0. So 
basically you can write t as two times v zero times sin delta sin theta divided by t. Yes, this gives you the vertical initial velocity. And divided by g, you can solve for the time that it travels to the highest point, where its vertical velocity is zero. And by double this term, you can get the whole time that it falls to the same level. Yeah. And using the trig identity function, you can combine these two into sine 2 theta because sine 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine theta cosine theta yes so you can combine these three terms and you will get r is equal to v0 squared times sine 2 theta divided by g yeah so we have this formula now let's go look at the problem a fire hose held near the ground shoot water at a speed of 6.8 meters per second. At what angle should the nozzle point in order that the water land 2 meters away? Why there are two different angles? Sketch the two trajectories. So this is a question, this is for problem 19 on page 66. And the diagram is like this. You have a hose, and you shoot out water at a speed of 6.8 meters per second. And the horizontal range is 2 meters. So naturally, you will think about the formula that I just, I just told you. So the problem wants to, you to solve for this theta, theta zero. Now, let's look at how we can do this. Wait for a moment, I'm going to look at my paper. Oh yeah, now I'm back. Um, we know that the equation is R equal to V0 times sine 2 theta divided V0 square times sine 2 theta divided by G and we can arrange this formula we can get sine 2 theta equal to R times G divided by V0 square and by using arc sine with this stuff yes Recall that sine and arc sine are inverse functions. So when you apply arc sine to the result of a sine, you can get the exact angle of this two theta. Yeah. So two theta is equal to arc sine this stuff. And we can put in these quantities we know. And we will find that arc sine this stuff is equal to 25.0087 degrees and here is a very common trap that most students will fall into arc sine can only tell you about an angle that is in the first quadrant that's in the first quadrant that is from 0 to 90 degrees or a half pi but you should know that you should know that sine theta is equal to sine pi minus theta yes sine theta is equal to sine pi minus theta so basically these two sine values are the same so you calculate 2 theta to be 25 and so but there is actually another angle that may be related to 2 theta that is 100 and 
54.913. You can see the sum of these two numbers is exact, exactly 180 degrees. Yes. So we have got these two angles. These two angles are both possible. Yes. And we divide it by two. We can get that theta is equal to approximately 13 degrees or 77 degrees. So the thing you should know is that when the arc sign gives you a number, you should always try to find if there is a complementary number in the second quadrant. Yes, in this, in this case, there is actually an, another number, and that number is 154 and so. So, there are two answers to this problem, 13 degrees or 77 degrees. And the, and the trajectory, the trajectory, that if a trace the object moves should be look like this or this. This is the 13 degrees and this is a 77 degrees trajectory. Okay, we have finished this problem. Now let's go to look at one problem about relative velocity. That is from page 69 and question 49. So here at the center oh my what's this? Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. At the center of a coordinate system, that is a coordinate system. I have placed a plane at the center of the coordinate system. An airplane whose air speed is 620 km per hour is supposed to fly in a straight path 35 degrees north of east. So, this is the path it wants to travel. 35 degrees north north of east, 35 degrees. But a steady wind with speed is 95 km per hour is blowing from the north. It is blowing from the north, so it should point to the south. That wind is direct source, directly source, south, and its speed is 95 km per hour. So the problem asks, in what direction should the plane head? This is the, this is the velocity of the wind, VW, that means V wind. So basically this is the resultant vector. And we have no one component vector. We were asked to find another component vector. So um, how should how should we draw that? Using the triangle, using the triangle method. That is, if this is V A and this is V B, and this is V V A plus V B should be equal to V. Using this triangular method, we can draw a line here that point from this point to this point and we can move it upward. Yeah, that is the direction the plane should head to. We can name it VP, which stands for V plane. And its velocity is, and its speed is 620 km per hour. Now the question asks us about the theta angle here. Let's now solve it. Yeah, let's now solve it. 
So basically, Vp, Vp difficult vector is equal to V minus V wind, the, the velocity of a wind. So um, the graph looks like this. So we should first break up this vector. We should uh, break up this vector. Break it into V up and V y. So V up is equal to cosine 30 times 5 times V. And yeah, that V is equal to that. So we know that vector v is equal to vector p plus velocity vector w. So we can write it into the f, y, x, and y component vectors. So v is equal to cosine theta and vp. These are the magnitudes of the velocity vector. The sine direction should be sine 35 v is equal to sine theta vp minus vw. And we are arranging these two equations you can get tangent 35 cotton theta vp is equal to sine theta vp minus vw and now you should solve for the theta and using the calculator yeah using the calculator you can see that the answer is 42.2 so theta is equal to 42.2 degrees. Okay, so we are done. Next. We are going to look at problem 51 on page 69. So there is an unmarked police, police car. The car is traveling at constant speed of 50, 95 km per hour. And there is a speeder. And its speed is, and its speed is unknown. Precisely one second after the speeder passes, the speeder is faster than the police car, and it, uh, one second after the speeder passes, the car starts to accelerate with a speed with an acceleration of two meter per second square, and after seven second, the car. The police car finally catch up with the speeder. So the question, the problem asks you, what was the speeder's speed? So let me let me analyze the two motion of a police car and the speeder. So the our speed speeder kept the same speed throughout the motion, but the police car kept moving at the same speed for the first second and then for the uh, following seven seconds the police car starts to accelerate so but but however uh, in this eight second the police car and the speeder have moved the same distance so we can 
write, write out a kinematic equation based on these two the motion of these two objects. So yeah, let me have a look. Um, if this is one second, so so seven second. Yeah, this is this is a little bit tricky. So let me first write out this distance. This should be v s minus. Vp times t. This is because the difference in their speed times the first one second, the time move should be the distance travel. Uh, the, um, that should be the difference in the distance between the police car and the speed. So this one should be v minus Vp times t, and this one should, should be. V speed times T prime. Yes, that is T prime. And then we sh we can look at this part. We know that the police car is always accelerating, and it have an initial speed of this Vp is equal to ninety five kilometer per hour. So we can write this as Vp T. We have, we can um we. Right, we can write this um as yes, it moves the particle car moves this distance in a t prime equal to seven seven second, v p times t prime plus half a times t prime square. So we can arrange this. We move this to the right. I don't know. We move this to the left, and we can get v s minus v p times yeah that's t plus t prime is equal to half a t prime square so that v s minus v p is equal to a t prime square divided by two times t plus t prime and then we can move v p v p to the right and then we put in this number and we can calculate calculate Vs. So according to the result on my calculator, according to the result on my calculator, you can see that Vs is equal to one hundred and fourteen kilometer per hour. Yes, that's the speed of the speeder.